Yeah. What's up, church? A, uh, there was a little eight. Um, this is Cabernet. I, I think, pardon? This is Cabernet. Yeah, it's 100% Cabernet. I think it's from a Gamba barrel. Um, we kind of uh, really been enjoying playing with Gamba lately. It's uh, done well with some of these powerful Red Mountain um, wines. Um, basically, with Clipson, I, you know, Clipson's one of the great wines, uh, great vineyards in the world. I, I, you know, I have been blessed to be able to travel all over the world from from Margaret River to uh, you name it, Germany, everywhere. And, I, I, and one of my goals in life is to walk these vineyards and say, because how can you make a great wine if you don't know what a great wine is? And you can't really find out what a great wine is unless you're trying a lot of great wines. And then you've got to go to these places and you got to say, what are you doing? What, you know, what, what's going on here? And it doesn't even mean that you're doing the same thing at all. I can go to Burgundy and, and I go into the vineyards in Burgundy and look at what they're doing with biodynamics in Burgundy. And I can learn a lot, even though I'm sure in Washington State I'll probably never make Pinot. Um, so, but it doesn't mean that I can't learn a lot. And it was apparent to me one of the first times that, that, that I went into Clemson. I mean, Patricia is absolutely right. When I had to, when, when I first came in and, and had to beg for grapes, I remember I had to drag David Lake along with me because I think if I went in by myself, it was about in 95 or 94, something like that. Uh, if, I, if I didn't bring David in along with me, they'd kind of go, who is that? Yeah, who's this guy? So but I was smart enough to bring David with me. and. Uh, and got some fruit and started, uh, you know, made some promises that we're going to treat it right. And, and uh, it certainly has been a huge part, not just of the little sellers, but of so many different wineries around the world. I, I think people don't know how many Washington State wineries from um, all parts of the state not only use Clipson, but use Red Mountain in their blends. But for me personally, uh, I've always had to deal with the fact that do I blend this or do I create a terroir, well, terroir wine? I believe that Clipsy has a signature and has a uniqueness in its place. I've always felt that I could pick Clipsy out of a lot of tastings um, because it has that kind of deep plum and, and, and dark fruit kind of character and just this massive structure that really stands out. And so I could look at that as being a terroir wine. But there's one thing that, that I always like to mention is that, and I think all three of us here are uh, founding winemakers. It's one of the great privileges and honors that we have in a new wine growing region is that we are founding winemakers of, of each winery that we're developing. And, um, and being the founding winemaker, you have an obligation to give that winery kind of a style or kind of a uniqueness in the world. And unless you're making you know, a million case winery where you're just trying to get price points, which is great, we need more of that in Washington State, I think. But really, in, in the boutique level, it, you have to be different from the guy next to you. It's the great lesson of the French. The guy across the fence, you've got to be different from him, or else it's price points. And, and nobody wants to get into that. That's so great, basically, great point. <clears throat> so basically, you know, for me as founding winemaker of Bill Sellers, I have always considered the number one most important thing is to create a style or an identity, just as Patricia's wanted a style for Clipson. I've always wanted a, a, a style <laughs> for, for Chalure Steak. And hopefully we'll be able to pick that up when we see that. Um, so what do I do in Clipson? Um, you know, I, I, you know, I've seen time. There's been times, quite frankly, where that's been the best barrel in my uh, in my cellar. It's the Clipson Cabernet. It's just been wonderful, and I could bottle that, charge, put Delil's name on it, put Clipson's name on it, charge anything I want, and it would sell because it's a wonderful wine. But it wouldn't be what we do at Delil. It wouldn't be what you know the, that unique and stylistic um, wine that we're making at Delil. It would be something that maybe other people could do because we know that, what, 27 or 30 people buy you know, grapes from, from Clipson. And it wouldn't be what, what we were trying to do. I've always been a blender. I'm sure Mike will make a pun out of that somehow. <laughs> uh, 
I, let, me, let, me, let me say this thing. A finished wine, essentially. The first wine is essentially a finished wine that's about to be bottled. Uh, the second wine is not only a different grape and a different vintage, but it has had a, a year less time in barrel. And so uh, a couple of things pop right out. Uh, in, in wine number two, you have a much cleaner, clearer expression of fruit. And, and, and by the way, if I had had a gong, Chris, I was going to bong it at, at, at 1107. You were the first person to use the T word. <laughs> we went 20 minutes before that showed its ugly face. Uh, but th this is really what it comes down to is, is terroir, that, 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 that horrible French word that everybody thinks is spelled terrier. Uh, <laughs> but there is terroir in some vineyards in Washington. It is an expression that comes from the vineyard and the site and comes out in the wine. I personally think that the, the best, cleanest, purest expression of of terroir when it's done right in Washington is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. I did an article about that that was eviscerated by the editors at the Wine Enthusiast, but the point was when you get 100% pure Cabernet, and I understand being a blender, this to you is not a finished wine, but as a pure expression of Washington Cabernet from a great site, from an outstanding vintage, especially in a hot site uh, because it was a little cooler and so it, 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 it didn't, you didn't have to fight the ripeness the way you do in some years. So I find that, that this, this number two is just, just an absolute glorious, fragrant fruit, aromatics pour out of it and, and it, it has all the qualities that, that Mike and Chris mentioned about the fruit that they get. Michael, uh, Michael Jordan, can you help us help the help the <coughs> structure? I mean, but not it's not biting tannin, but you know it's there, and this wine's going to live for some time. But I think more the minerality, and I don't want to say earthiness because it's not you know there's this connotation of earthiness that I don't think that expresses what's in this glass. It's more there's a minerality here. Because, you know, after all, these, these roots are going down deep into the ground and pulling up, not distilled water, but, you know, um, an expression of everything that they bring in. Uh, and I, to me, you've got this purity of fruit, as you're, you're saying, but there's something about the minerality in this site that that's what I think, uh, the, the high quality <coughs> fruit, but the beautiful um, flavor and fragrance of the earth that shows this site is really what makes this a Grand Cru site. In, in, what, in both of these first Yes, ones. absolutely, in both of them. Even though this, the Merlot has the, the beautiful red fruit and the plush, soft plum and cherry. Uh, and this is just all about cassis and blackberry and black plum, just all day and pure and focused and very cool on the palate. And that's something else that I find from, from these sites, especially yours specifically, is there's kind of a cool mouthfeel to these wines you know, uh, whether it's a barrel sample or a finished wine, that to me, in a way, states that it, it is Washington wine, and, and more site-specific from this area, that, that kind of cool mouthfeel um, is very unique, to, and that it's very highly sought after.